the discriminant. What's the discriminant about? Um, is it because quadratic equations are haters and they discriminate against, you know, uh, not quite. Though they, the discriminant is about discriminating between different kinds of um, quadratic functions, right? So, to understand what the discriminant is, you've got to come back to your quadratic formula, okay? So, quadratic formula tells you for any given quadratic equation um, that is in general form, okay, you can express its roots in this way. Um, and you guys have learnt this formula to death. Now, this equation will tell you uh, the roots of the equation. Okay? Uh, and you know, for quadratics we expect two. But there aren't always two. There might be one or there might be none. Okay? Now, you can see the important part of this equation, the part that tells you whether there's two or one or none, um, is this part that's sitting underneath the square root sign. Okay? And that's why we call this the discriminant, okay? So we denote it by the special sign uh, delta, okay? So if delta is equal to, if the discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac, when we know the value of delta, what does that tell us about the number of roots? Okay, well, let's think about this. If delta uh, were negative, okay, if the discriminant was less than zero, what would happen to the quadratic formula, okay? Well, because you've got a negative number underneath the square root, um, this thing kind of explodes because you can't get values out of it, at least not real values, values in graph, okay? So if the discriminant is less than zero, what that implies is you have no real roots, okay? No real roots, okay? Um, sometimes you'll see it written, you know, it's, it's sort of strange, um, they'll, they'll sometimes say that means you've got unreal roots because strictly speaking there are roots, it's just that they involve complex numbers, um, numbers that aren't real, right? But I think this is the more traditional way to say it. And if you've never seen um, that funny looking R before, which has two lines along the, um, the vertical line, um, that's just the set notation symbol for real numbers. Okay. Alright, so that's if the discriminant is negative. If the discriminant is just equal to zero, just on zero, okay? You can see what happens here, right? You'll have x being equal to minus b plus or minus zero, right? All over 2a. Um, so don't forget, minus b on 2a, that's your axis, right? Um, the axis of symmetry of the parabola. So it's like the middle. And this plus or minus is how far you go on either side to get to the roots, because it's symmetrical, right? So that far and that far, okay? Well, if you're going zero distance, You've only got one root, and it's at the axis of symmetry, okay? So you would say one real root, okay? So discriminant less than zero, discriminant equal to zero. The last case is if the discriminant is greater than zero, and that's the case that we're normally used to dealing with, right? Like if you have the square root of five, okay? Um, this is, if you like, zero roots, one root, so you would expect it to have two roots, um, two real roots, okay? Now, uh, let's pause before we go any further. Um, when we say one real root here, right, so a situation you're looking at is something like say y equals x squared, and it's just sitting whoop, on the axis, right? Well, we keep on talking about it's a quadratic, it should have two roots, right? So sometimes you'll see this set as not one real root, but uh, two equal roots. Uh, like saying unreal roots, that's a less common way to say it. Um, it's, it's like two roots on the same spot, okay? But it's equally valid, right? Um, by the same token, having two real roots here, what we really mean is they're roots in different spots, okay? So sometimes you'll hear that said as two distinct roots. So you like, prove that k has to have some value for the roots to be distinct. That means in, in different places. That's all I mean. Okay? Now, underneath this um, part here, if the discriminant is positive, um, there's a special case. I mentioned to you some of, some of you just now. That is if the discriminant is a perfect square. Right? So if the discriminant is k squared, where k is an integer. Uh, in other words, if k is a perfect square, okay? 
smooth moves. Okay, so if k is a perfect square, what happens? Well, if k is like 25, or 64, or 100, right? When it goes underneath the square root here, you can evaluate the square root, right? So instead of the square root of 25, you'd write 5. Or instead of the square root of 64, you'd write 8. Okay? So you won't have any square root anymore. It will vanish. Okay? So there'll be no sirs. So if the discriminant is a square number, um, you get what we call rational roots. Um, this means rational roots. Because you don't have any of these sirs, these irrational values in there, right? So sometimes they'll say, tell me what values of... Uh, what values A, B, and C must have uh, in order for the roots of this equation to be rational. That's all it means. Okay. Um, one last thing before we leave the discriminant. Um, instead of looking at the positive case, let's look at the negative case. If a quadratic equation has no roots, right, that means it's either always above the axis or always below. Okay? So it's a situation like this, always above, or it's always below because it can't cross because it has no real roots, right? So we give these two different things um, particular names because sometimes they're physically uh, or geometrically important to us, right? So since this one up here is always positive, right? That means you can take any value and it'll be definitely positive. I can guarantee it. Um, since it'll be definitely positive, we call it positive definite. On the other hand, if it's the other one, if it's always below the axis, if any value you take, it'll be definitely negative, then we call it negative definite. Now, in both these cases here, you've got a discriminant less than zero, right? So what's the decisive factor that tells you whether it's facing up or facing down? Which, which number in the quadratic equation defines a... Yeah, it's, it's this coefficient, isn't it? Uh, the leading coefficient, if you remember that from year 9 polynomials, okay? Um, that a, if it's like 1, or minus 2, or whatever, it'll tell you whether it's concave up or concave down, right? So if a is positive, it'll be concave up, right? And if a is negative, it'll be concave down, it'll be negative, definitely, okay? That's pretty much all the things you need to know about the discriminant, or just sort of roll it to a ball. Does anyone have 